radar. Yo, today I'm joined by the one, the only Young Six. What up? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me, my man. Yo, this is very exciting. Uh, introduction to Trap Fro album out now on the Daily 2.0 with 24 Hours, another banger, also out now. Yo, first of all, I got to check in, in with you. How have you been during the past year, during these crazy times that we've been living through? Oh, uh, man, I've been... Uh... I've been amazing. Um, I've just been putting in work. So yeah, I gotta say amazing because right now we're starting to see like the fruits of our label and everything I've been doing over the pandemic is starting to reflect in a positive way, you know, so we can see the stats going up and that's a good thing. So I have to say, based on what's going on right mm -hmm. now, I have to say, yeah, we, we did good during the pandemic, you know, compared to, you know, what we would have done if we didn't, you know, take the situation the way we did. So yeah, but I spent the pandemic working releasing my album and you know continuing with you know putting out dope projects after that now i gotta ask you right because you know we over here you know uh, you just came over to america you know you're in you're in los angeles right now we're built we're growing your fan base you're working with 24 hours so i gotta ask you you know for all the people who might just be checking you out for the first time might just be stumbling upon your music or on this interview give me a little history about young six how did we all get started in this music industry stuff um okay um I started by being just a, a music fan at first. And when the 50 Cent Get Rich or Die Try, um, Get Rich or Die Try an album came out, yeah. like I was rapping every record and people wanted me to like, you know, rap the records in school then. So that's how I started rapping because I needed to know the lines perfectly mm -hmm. well. And after I did that, I started changing, you know, words in there to put my own words to make them more like my thing. Yeah. You know, so that's how we really started. But when I started making music professionally, I was just on, on Lil Wayne and Drake, like, 24 hours. I had an MP3 player then. Um, Africa wasn't really big on internet and all mm. that. So I just had an MP3 player with a 1,000 songs, and he had at least 300 to, to 400 Lil Wayne different mixtape records. I had all Lil Wayne albums, Drake projects. Drake had only just dropped the So Far Gone project as I then with the successful single mm. and all that. So I, I came up on that sound, you know, T.I., you know, um, Fajo and, and all them guys. So like, I just, I just kept going. And at some point when I was uh, 21, I, when I was, uh, yeah, I did a, I did a, a mixtape record, a cover of the biggest record in Nigeria. Right. Mm -hmm. And the record went viral. And he got on radio and was getting as much spins as the original record. Wow. And that's how I got in the that's how I got in the game. And I signed a management deal with uh Storm 360, which mm -hmm. was a big label then. And my first single as God Will Have It was with Whiskey in 2011. Right. And it became a hit record. So I found myself in this, you know, space where I was young six. So that's just a summary of you know what went down and how the journey started for me. But I before like, then, it, was, okay. it wasn't easy. I feel like that was a really wild ride that you just told me on. You said before then it wasn't easy. What was kind of going on, I guess, like before then that you were, I guess, personally going through before, you know, every the music stuff took off? Yeah. Um, first of all, I, I came from a place where nobody ever made it rapping. Mm. Not to even talk about, you know, taking it this far, you know, rapping. So, like... That was the first challenge. Like nobody ever did. Like, why you want to do this? Nobody has ever done this and succeeded or even be, be, become famous or whatever. Like, why do you want to do this of all them things? You know what I mean? So right. that was the first challenge. But I started seeing good response because the first people that kept telling me that I couldn't do this were the first people to join my crew when they saw I could <laughs> when they saw that I could really rap and, and all that. So yeah. you know, uh, that was the that was the, the biggest challenge I that point in time and when I started improving my skills I wanted to take things to the next level then I realized that I had more challenges in me because where I'm from it's not where the industry is in Nigeria I'm six hours I'm six hours drive away from Lagos which is where the Nigerian music industry is so that was another challenge right. plus I'm a south side boy and 90 percent of the superstars you see from West Africa mostly Nigeria mm -hmm. are all like um, mostly western you know mm -hmm. artists so those were like crazy challenges, you know, I had to face. Then growing into this um, brand figure, having a hit record at the early stages of my career created a different, you know, level of pressure. And that's how I got into Trap Pro. 
so yeah, that's a, that's a summary of how the journey started too. And plus I went to Lagos to chase my dreams with about $30 in my pocket. And look where we wildest, are now. <laughs> that's the wildest thing I ever did. That's, yo, that's such an incredible story. So explain to me the, so Trap for, I'm assuming is like a genre that you kind of take it on and, cr- and created it and has labeled as your sound. Explain to me this. Okay, um, so like I said, you know, like, um, rap wasn't really like a big thing, you know, mm-hmm. at that point in time. Like, yeah, everybody knew Biggie, everybody knew Pac, everybody knew the hit records that came out, you know, from every good rapper that was in the West. But when it was an African thing, it wasn't really embraced with the same energy because mm-hmm. people always felt like, yo, our sound is Afrobeat. So, like, why don't you just make Afrobeat music? You feel me? But I grew up in the Southern parts of Nigeria where we, we actually idealize and emulate what was going on in the Western part of the world, which is the, the hip hop culture. So that's right. where I'm from, you know what I mean? And, but the, in the, the industries in the West, in Nigeria and the West, are, they, they're on the Afrobeat culture. So me becoming a, becoming a star at a very early stage put a lot of pressure on me because I had rap skills, but I didn't have the Afrobeat skills to, to succeed in a commercial space. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn how to do that. And in learning to do that, um, I became somewhat successful with a couple of other hip records. And at some point, I got to an interview and they were asking me, like, how come you, you, you're you taking this to this level? Like, every year, at least you come up with something and all that. And I realized that my sound was different. And it was the flair and the twang I got from the Western influence. You know what I mean? So I'm right. like, yo, I, I need to use this to create a part and a solution for something I think is a problem you know, for mm-hmm. Afro B and also a solution for other people who people might not believe in because they have a skill of a generator that's not so huge in the continent. I'm like, yo, this is a, this is a blueprint. I'm going to take it, create a legacy, create music and sound that people can enjoy regardless of their where they come from or where they grew up in. You feel me? And it's basically a fusion of trap and Afrobeat music. Trap, which was I was, which I, um, the culture I was influenced by in Afrobeat music, which is my culture as a Nigerian. Right, so, yeah, right. that's how Trap Pro came about. Right, and obviously, so we got the project out now. Um, with this project, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, compared to your other projects, this kind of felt like the real, obviously, it's called Introduction to Trap Fro, you know, and obviously, you, you've you been doing it for, you've been doing this music stuff for a few years. Why did you feel like now was, like, the time where you're like, okay, I'm going to create this project that's going to kind of not only explain my sound, but kind of like introduce it and in and, and this type of way? Um. It, it it was uh it took a lot of it took a lot of like it took a lot of work mm-hmm. processing collaborations mm-hmm. and it took a lot of growth too like why I created it I also grew in it to understand you know what I wanted yeah. to do about it understanding like oh you can't just create a genre of music there needs to be a culture around whatever it is you're creating mm-hmm. you know there needs to be certain values that define you as a trap for artist for example when you see a hip-hop artist if you see a rock star you know that di- you know the difference because they're setting values that they find the genre that they do that you can associate with their character or their brand or their attitude or you know how they act or you know what i mean that mm-hmm. that kind of thing so um I, I was growing in it. I was having conversations with people. I don't know if you ever heard of Fela Kuti. He's a, he's a legend, mm-hmm. a great legend. He was the, he's actually the innovator of Afrobeat music. Oh, I didn't you know who was the innovator. I knew, I've heard about him, but I didn't, I didn't realize that that's how deep it went. Yeah, yeah. And um, I got, um, I was blessed to be in this, um, to be in this conference that Google invited me for in, in Nigeria. And I met with um, Fela, the legend. I met with his, with his manager. And somehow, you know, we got in touch. So when I was, you know, building the trap flow culture, I was facing a lot of challenges, you know, at first, before I created an album called Introduction to Trap right. Flow, I was already, you know, experimenting with the sound, releasing singles, and I was seeing the challenges that I was up against. And I called him one day, I'm like, yo, like, this is crazy. Like, how did you guys, like, <laughs> go, like, create Afrobeat in an era where, obviously, jazz music was the number one genre. So, like, how do you go into something and start doing something to the point where other people now believe in it and say, this is the music we want to make? Because those mm. were the challenges I was facing. Right. And, you know, he, he educated me and told me that everything I'm facing now is only natural. Like I'm creating something that never existed before me in the world. 
people are expected to misunderstand it at first. Some people will go with it because I'm young six, but it's going to take a lot of work. So that was when I knew okay, I was doing the right things because I was going through the right challenges I needed to be going through, you know. So at that point in time, I felt like, you know, I was ready to put my foot on the ground and give it a go. And we set some goals for ourselves. We're trying to hit a million streams in a month when we put out the introduction to Trap for Album because it was a sound that a lot of people were not, you know, um, familiar with, you know, the, 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 the trap and Afro fusion, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, but luckily for us, we put out the project, we hit a million views in 20, a million streams in 24 hours. That was a huge milestone for myself and my team. We got, um, we're trending. If you check the day the album came out, it was me, Drake, and one of the artists <laughs> trending on, on, on Apple Music. That's amazing. That was, that was really huge for it. That was a huge milestone for myself and my team too. Also, Audio Mac um, released their most streamed albums for the week and my album was number five and I was the only independent artist in the top 10. That was mm -hmm. also a huge milestone for myself and my team. So we've just been, you know, pushing it since 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 then, the trap for culture and all that. I love that. And you mentioned, you know, obviously being independent. Why was that... An important thing for you, I guess, going into this project and 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 in your career. Uh, well, for me, I um, it's it's, it's basically, it's basically like working with the right people. It's not about mm -hmm. really being independent. It's working with the right people, you know, and what everybody has to bring to the table. You know, at this point in time, I want to work with people who see the fish on. You know, what I mean, it's not just about the bag. Like for what I'm doing, money is just a reward. You right. Know, it's it's really seeing what you do succeed. That that comes first. Right. You feel right. me? So 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 that was what came first for me, like working with the people that saw the vision of what I wanted to do at that point in time. At some point, labels tried to get involved. After the first week when we put out the album and audio map were putting out the stats and all these people, the labels trying to, you know, get in and like, yo, let's let's take out the album, release a deluxe album of this project and all that. But at that point in time, I didn't want to lose the momentum I had. So mm. there's still opportunities that I could work with some people, but I'm just focused on the vision right now and taking it to where it needs to be as far as I could go on my own. Right, right. And I and I love that for you. And also, you know, obviously we got this new joint with 24 hours out now on the Daily 2.0. And I love this joint because I feel like, you know, it, it it's part of that trap pro that you that you know that you that you're promoting and that you're you know you're spearheading but like you're also linking with this american artist who is also very diverse in his own respect so how did that kind of how did that connection kind of happen um okay so um when i got to la um i was living in this place and i kept seeing like uh them sometimes you know you see like them, them thai come around yeah the weeds come around, you know. I was meeting all sorts of people in the elevator, so I know that Tokyo, um, made in Tokyo and 24 Hours were living wow. in the same building with me. So one day I ran into 24 Hours in the elevator, right? And like, you know, we kicked it. I told them, you know, I'm Africa, you know, I mean, we followed each other on Instagram, you know, a couple of times we met again, and you mm -hmm. know, one day invited me over to his house, and I was, you know, playing projects for him, and I played on the daily, and he's like, yo, like. I really like I, I I I vibe with this record, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, cool. And who 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 best to put on a record called on a daily that 24 hours? Of course, you know, it just makes sense. <laughs> it just makes sense. So you know, and he's a very humble guy, great guy, good friend too. You know, always coming through anytime I need him. So yeah, it was it was the first one of the first artists I connected with actually. So it was it was just natural that you know we put something out and spread that energy. I love that. And, you know, so who are some other American artists that you really want to connect with? Because obviously, you know, I feel like I feel like in ways you, you've worked with some of the biggest names out of Africa, some of the biggest names, Afrobeats, obviously, you know, Wizkid, DeVito, Mr. Easy, we could we could get into those in a second. But as for American artists, as you promote this sound and this genre and this uh, and this album, who are some other people that you really kind of would love to get on a track with? Oh, man, I really love to get on the on a, on a track with um, with Drake. You know, I, I, learned a lot from, I learned a lot from Drake while. You know, um, while um, while I was creating, you know, right. Afro beats, you know, what I mean, and definitely Drake, definitely Kanye West, definitely Lil Wayne. But those are people <laughs> I want to work with based on off, you know, how I see them and how they mm. inspired me to to keep pushing. But as of right now, I definitely love to work with Gunna. I definitely mm. love to work with Polo G. Mm. You know, um, 
myself and Rich Raymond, we've been talking. I know it's only a matter of time. Um, That's awesome. Myself, myself and Jimmy almost had a record. Almost had a record. Um, that record might never come out. And myself and Swilly, we're still talking. I got a record produced by White Cliff. That's Whoa, real. that's, that's, a, that's a, awesome. That's a strong one. Yeah, that's a strong one. That's one of the new um, singles that are gonna come out later in the year towards the summer. And um, who else? I work. I've worked with a couple of people, but I don't want to. I don't want to jinx anything. <laughs> you know, you know, how music is. You might of not course. really get to put out every record until they cleared. So yeah, man. But I was in the game. I was in the studio with the game before it released this album. That Whoa. was an amazing, legendary moment for me. You know, what I mean. So yeah, man. I've just been in this amazing spaces with mm-hmm. you know amazing people out here, and I just want to keep you know working and putting out that energy. Right, right. So, you know, obviously, I got to ask you about, about the Afrobeats, like, greats that you've worked with already. You know, obviously, DeVito, Wizkid. How did all these, because you mentioned, you touched on the Wizkid, but how did the DeVito record come about? Because I know it was a while ago, it was, it was early on in your career, but how, like, how did that kind of connection come about for the two of y'all? Oh, man, David is actually, like, one of my coolest friends, you know, and, <laughs> yeah, like, and, and every time he's in, Every time he's in LA, we're always together. You know what I mean? Like he's one of my coolest friends. Like, yo, we we really did a lot of ish in, in Africa, man. Like we really, we really effed it up. You know what I mean? Y'all like, turned that really, shit up. <laughs> oh my God. Yo, my God. Like if me and David are in a, in a space, you don't want you don't want to be up in that space for real. So like I just love David. Like we, we have like the same, he's the kind of person that wants everybody around him to mm. win. And that's the kind of person I am too. So it's like it's easy when it was easy for us to connect. His boy actually connected us. But before then, when I was when I was in Stone, the first people I signed to, right? David had his first official record put out then, and his manager was Nato C's um, mm. was Nato C's nephew. Nato C was the biggest rapper in Africa then, and we were on the same label, right? Right. So he had David had a record with this guy and. His nephew was Asa, who was Davido's manager. So David always used to come around because we go to the same shows. We go to David was always like opening every show we had and all wow. that stuff. So that's how, you know, we always seen each other everywhere backstage and all that. So at some point, you know, at, it, it starts with having a hit record. Then it goes to developing yourself into a brand and a superstar. So there were a lot of us like that that were always linking up. But mm-hmm. after a couple of years, it was just, me, David, and a few other guys. So that's where the bond really came from, like being part of the few kids that came out at a certain point in time and they were still in the game. You know what I mean? So that's how it came about, you know, and uh, he had one of my records, for example, featuring Stoneboy while he was in America, right? <laughs> he had it while he was in America and he hit right. me up. He's like, yo, this record is so, it's so hard. I'm coming back to Nigeria. We got to work. We got to do something. I'm like, bro, say less you feel me and when he came through it was more interesting on, on working on the remix but i'm like yo i got something fire man like let's do something fire something new and we go to the studio I, I i was in his house and he wasn't around his boy hit him up like yo young six is here right now i think it was at the embassy with mm. his kid and he left that place in 30 minutes was back at the crib and you know we just started working we started vibing and that's how we came up with the with the record let me know and that's how we just be kicking in and keeping it real since then. He always wanted me around when he was when I was when I was in the town with him and all that kind of stuff. And we always look out for each other most times when we have to. So yeah, man. That's a that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that story with me. And you know, so we, we spoke a little bit before this interview. What what do we have coming up? Because I know you got a, you're already working on another project. You got a new single on the way, a couple of new singles on the way, one produced by Wyclef that we just found out, which is awesome. What is next in store for in, in 2021 for Young Six? Oh, in 2021, um, hopefully, hopefully you guys get to you guys get to see a brand new EP for me. You guys also get to have my NFT project at some time Ooh. during the year. Yeah, and also I'm working on a mixtape, so you're definitely going to see a lot of singles from that nice. and a lot of videos as well, because over the years, my fans are always complaining that um, they, they haven't had enough of me when it comes to, like, video content. So I recently put out a production team out here in L.A., so we got a, something like what Tori is doing when like I have my own production team nice. shooting my videos. And we so far we shot like four videos in like several months. Jeez. So 
So like we just out now right now we're just putting out content and creating more content basically. That's dope. So we got an EP, we got a mixtape, and we got an NFT project. So you're gonna drop three more times this year is what you're telling me. Yes. My yes, man going yes. crazy. I got, I, got, I got one, I got one record from the mixtape dropping on the 30th. And we got the happy video dropping two weeks after that. Mm. So like in the next in the next 30 days, you you're gonna you're gonna get two projects from us. Also, we got the on the daily challenge out there as well, which is out there to create engagement for the record and also create an opportunity for super talented artists like myself all around the world. So yeah. Right, because I think I saw I think I saw on your IG, uh, on your IG feed, you posting some people who are doing the challenge, right? Yes, yes, it's 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 going crazy. Like we have over three hundred entries already. Like it's going crazy. Like the competition is going crazy. I was on SoundCloud today and I couldn't even listen to everything. It's like <laughs> it's it's a lot, man. And I and I'm really happy. And one of the things I'm really happy about when it comes to the, the challenge is mm -hmm. uh, we have like eighty percent of the people entering for the challenge from America, which is where we're yes. actually focused on now when it comes to like marketing and you know, target audience. So that's a that's a really huge milestone for us as well, seeing that things are moving forward in the right direction. This is incredible, man. You know, I'm so excited for everything that you that you have coming up and I'm excited to watch you grow because I know, I know, I know you about to be out of here. We go, you know, you out of here now, but you better be out of here even like with three projects this year, you're going to go crazy. So I, I thank you for your time today and thank you for sharing so many of these amazing stories that you shared with me and, and even the little insights like the White Clef stuff, like I'm so excited for that record. That record is going to be crazy. I swear it is. It's, it is. It's one of my favorite records right now. And also, you guys should watch out for Sugar Bay as well. That's another really hot record as well. So, yeah. Yo, I like I said, I appreciate you being here with me. Before we sign off, let the people know where they could follow you at. Uh, anything else? Message for your fans. Anything else you want to plug in there real quick? Now is the time to do it. All right, man. You guys can check me out on Instagram. It's at Young6. That's Y-U-N-G figure 6 I X. And on, on Twitter is the same thing. Facebook is the same thing. On Snapchat is Life of King 6. And I just want to let everybody out there know that your challenges are only as big as your dreams. So whatever it is you're going through, face it and let's get it. It's JD, Young 6, 6 way. Blessings. <laughs> there it is, man. Until next time, make sure y'all go follow him. Make sure you go run up the new project out now. It's Young 6 on the radar, baby.